Hello, and thank you for joining us today in our study of the book of Psalms. Today we come to Psalm 110. Now, this particular psalm has a couple of distinctions. Number one, it is yet another psalm of David, and it is going to be a prophetic psalm. Uh, we've seen a few of these up until this point, but Psalm 110 is going to be one of those psalms that is going to point directly toward the times of the New Testament. The second thing with this particular psalm is it is one of the most well-known psalms uh, in the book of Psalms simply because it is utilized with its promises and its prophecies so much in the New Testament. It's not very long. It's only seven verses in length. And yet there's a lot to say when it comes to Psalm 110. So let's see what it says. In verse 1 beginning, we read, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Your people shall be volunteers in the day of your power, in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. You have the dew of your youth. The Lord has sworn and will not relent. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand. He shall execute kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the nations. He shall fill the places with dead bodies. He shall execute the heads of many countries. He shall drink of the brook by the wayside. Therefore, he shall lift up the head. As you look at Psalm 110, there are a couple of different aspects that I want us to take some time to pay attention to today. The first one is the fact that we have this particular message as a prophecy. These are these are things that are stated that are not about David. They are not going to be pertaining to David, but rather they are going to look forward to one who is to come later. They are going to be called messianic prophecies. And so as you get into the New Testament, you're going to find the verses of Psalm 110, especially verse 1 and verse 4, on several different occasions. Jesus is going to reference them in Matthew 22 and in the companion passages in Mark and Luke when it comes to David calling the Messiah Lord. And he's going to talk about the things that are stated in Psalm 110 verse 1 that the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. The writer of the book of Hebrews is also going to utilize verse 1 in his statements of how the Father spoke to about the Son differently from the angels in heaven in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 13. And so you have several instances in the New Testament, and that's not all of them, where Psalm 110 verse 1 is going to be referenced. You also have reference to Psalm 110 verse 4, where it talks about the Lord has sworn and will not relent. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. This is going to be quoted several times in the book of Hebrews, and especially in Hebrews chapters 5, 6, and 7. You're going to have this reference back to Melchizedek. Well, if you don't know who Melchizedek is, that does you absolutely no good. Melchizedek harkens back to the days of Abraham. He was the king of Salem, which would later become the city of Jerusalem. It would be Melchizedek to whom Abraham would give gifts and ask for him to offer sacrifices. He had the distinction of being both a king and a priest of God, which is why the Hebrews writer is going to point to this particular passage in the book of Hebrews because he is going to be pointing out the fact that Jesus is not just our king, but he serves as our high priest as well. And so you have these 
two verses especially, that while the entire psalm is looking forward to the Messiah, these two verses are going to be utilized very heavily in the New Testament in speaking concerning who Jesus was and what his relationship to his people is. The second thing I want us to notice is something out of verse 3. Because in the midst of everything that's being discussed here, you come to verse 3 and you have this statement. Your people shall be volunteers in the day of your power. In the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning, you have the dew of your youth. He talks about the fact, and somehow I have the wrong slide here, so uh, my apologies for that. But he talks about the fact that they will be volunteers. Volunteers is a different concept to the one who has grown up among the children of Israel. Because the children of Israel were ones who had to deal with things from the point of birth. Their relationship with God was something that they were born into through the promises of God, through the covenant with Moses, and on and on it goes. And yet this promise concerning the Messiah is going to talk about the fact that he is going to have his followers be volunteers. They are not going to be born into it. They are not going to be forced into his kingdom. But rather, they are going to be ones who choose to join. And in doing so, they make a commitment in their lives on a personal, intentional level. It is going to be a kingdom of choice, not a kingdom of requirement. And so you have here in Psalm 110 a very important and a very strong message pertaining to who the Messiah is going to be and what the Messiah is going to do. You have reference to his lineage. You have reference to his position. And you have reference to those who are going to serve him. My apologies for the mix-up with the graphics today. Uh, I am not perfect, but I hope that the things that we've talked about in Psalm 110 will be beneficial to you and will be helpful to you. Thank you so much for joining us for the video today. Next time, we are going to be looking at Psalm 111, and I hope that you'll join us then. But until then, have a great day.